Welcome back, everyone, to The Lazy Thinker Show. I'm your host, Jacob Wheeler. Joined with me, as always, is Mr. Tristan Bailey over there. Looking the a little tired, but still here. Hell no, I'm not even tired. I'm ready. My shirt says, my shirt, I'm in my underwear, so hopefully I don't stand too, too, too tall. <laughs> my shirt, my shirt says, outside I be ho- hooting, in, inside I be hollering. <laughs> oh, where'd you get that shirt? Julie got it yesterday. Um, That's cool. Yeah, it is cool. It is cute. Julie says, uh, it says, um, giddy up sluts, and it's three little cow- cowboy frogs. How fun. How fun. There's also that. this thing that says, born to say I'm sorry. Forced to say my fault, gang. All right, and that's the uh, that's the memes for today. I hope uh, hope you enjoyed it. Well, we got the meme segment of the, of the uh, show done, so thank you for leading that. First of all, before we get into... Uh, any crazy topic, I feel as though, we, and we talked about this, you brought it to my attention after someone talked to you, but um, oh, yeah. just, a, just a, a slight correction to uh, last week's reaction um, to the show. Um, we were reacting to the Fox uh, clip that CNN had put out um, of Greg Gutfeld um, making remarks, um, essentially sympathizing with the Holocaust. And so all of our responses, everything we said was true, but the clip itself that CNN put out made the other um, lady, oh. Lori something, look worse than she actually was because she was making the exact opposite point than what the clip um, was implying that, that she was putting out. And so I'll, I'll play the clip on the show now. Dude, we've been texting a lot these last few days. Um, Because we love each other. That's right. Okay, so this is the actual uh, clip of what she was saying. I I do think that she read the whole thing, and I think that it's an incredibly complex piece. When you look at 191 passages, you have some good, and, and frankly, I'm just fundamentally uncomfortable with the sentence that blacks benefited at all from this. And... You know, it made me think as someone, obviously I'm not black, but I'm Jewish. Would someone say about the Holocaust, for instance, that there were some benefits for Jews, right? While they were hanging out in concentration camps, you learned a strong work ethic, right? Maybe you learned a new skill. And we know the rest of the clip, but it was it's very different than what um, we had initially thought. And we, we had made the initial thought that um, she was talking about slavery as well, or was also implying that it was the same thing. And... Um, not necessarily the case. So apologies to that lady. And uh, I know no one saw that from that field, but I still feel like it's important for our integrity to at least correct Clarify. that. Yeah. I <laughs> shout out to, um, Josh for pointing it out. Um, yeah, I felt bad cause I was just like, damn, I was like trashing this poor lady. And she was just, she was using it as an example of how like in defense, what we were thinking. Um, right. Like how she crazy was making it our sounds. point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I, I was just like, you know, because I just kind of saw that clip, but yeah, but then the, the, the guy was his name again, Greg, Greg Gutfeld, Gutfeld, yeah, but then he used, he was just all like, well, if you think about, it, yeah, I mean, and then he, he uh, cited a piece of Jewish literature, I believe, because they were discussing a, a certain bill, but yeah, I just, I felt bad because I was like yelling at the lady, but Josh made me quite, he made me question the whole thing because when Josh pointed out that um, we were attacking the lady. Um, well, mostly me, I started attacking the lady. Uh, it was, I was just like, oh, damn, did she, that was out of context. He was telling me like, yeah, she was the one, she's like on y'all side. And I was like, oh, I just, I, I trusted Jacob for research. I figured like he would be, he would be fine. And I thought that the whole thing was out of context. I thought that it wasn't just the woman, the whole, like they showed a clip of a woman saying something out of context and then said, oh, they support aunt And that was the thing. But no, someone still said it. And so I didn't know right. what to believe anymore. I was just like, I'm so stressed out. Josh, uh, Josh confused me. And then because <laughs> Josh was so more pissed that, you know, we were saying the wrong thing at the wrong person, but also according to him, the wrong thing. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to get into, you know, well, me, all three of us are going to have a nice little debate on Saturday before we start the podcast. Cause we don't, we, we don't do no political on the Teagle, but right. we'll, we'll talk about it. Cause he said some, I'll, I'll, I'll go over some of the things he said. Cause I, I'm worried. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to miss say his point. Because, um, so I'm going to see if my, I'm pretty sure our, our, uh, chat saved. So I'll be able to say what he said exactly. So it's 
construed better. But yeah, I just want to clear that up. I felt bad for attacking that poor lady that was on our side. <laughs> and it was actually Greg that uh, I just, you know, I, di I didn't do the research. I was unresearched. Yeah. Shame on CNN a little bit for putting the clip out like that. Like that was like yeah. really but, kind I mean, of That's kind of the news's thing is they'll always fucking manipulate it to a side yeah. that seems more dramatic. I mean, so it's just annoying because they're the ones that's the main media outlet that talks all about how um, the right and like Fox and those other outlets do the wrong things and they manipulate information to make it seem a certain way. But when you're just caught doing the same shit, it's like, how are you going to get anyone to listen to you? Like that you don't get any respect that way. Yeah, I think left or right news is just fucking toxic and right. they're, they're just terrible, terrible news is, in general is terrible. While we're on the, the topic of, of new things for everyone watching this video um, can see on the bottom corner that we actually have our new wait, um, official, it's going to be the right corner. Oh, oh, wait, no, 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 no. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about our, our new little thing. Yes. The new logo, the watermark. It's over there. I'm looking at it. It's over there. Oh, nice. I like it. It's pretty cool. It's, it's almost exactly like the initial image that you sent me. It's just spruced up a little bit threw it into a little generator thing. And then this week will be the first week that clips are actually posted to the uh, Lazy Finger Show Instagram as well. And TikTok. We'll actually have some vertical stuff out because what oh, I want to oh, do oh, now, oh, oh. I'm usually mostly done with the edit by Thursday, at least the, like the, the rough cut. So I can post like a little like mini trailer for what this week's episode is going to be on the Instagram and, and TikTok beforehand. We talked about a lot of heavy stuff last week. It was most of the episode. And uh, and so this week would Give be it nice if light. it was a little lighthearted. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's not. Give it a little silly. To, yeah. So my hard-hitting question to you right now is, is Jake Paul a real boxer? You know, I, we actually discussed this on uh, – this week's episode of T Gulp. Oh, really? um, yeah, because I mean, I was I was called out because they're 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 like you, they're they're Jake Paul, Paul believers, and I'm more of a Jake Paul believer. Okay, now. let's not go that far. I'm not a Jake Paul believer, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean like continue. like uh, they because I was I just I had I had an understanding that this they just felt fake, it felt staged, like not the fighting that like they actually fought each other, but the outcome was predetermined. Um, but then so I you found actually out. Actually, believe that I did. Um, but then I got fucking. Then I got exposed, and they're they're just all like, "Well, what about uh?" I think his name was. I forgot who's the boxer he fought. Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury. Yeah, they were just all like, "Yeah, but why would he stage a loss or whatever against the first like real boxer he bought? He fought." Yeah. And I was just like, "I don't know. I don't know what's real. I just don't. And maybe it's just because I don't like him. <laughs> maybe I'm just trying to find a reason to think he's fake because yeah, I don't like yeah, him. But it just it's just all like him winning and then his whole." not fighting like actual boxers most of the time is just like it feels i don't know maybe it's not staged maybe it's not the outcome isn't predetermined but he purposely like picks certain people that he's like okay cool i stand a better chance right. of making it entertaining because these guys aren't like boxer boxers i'm not just fighting boxer guys and then he fought a boxer guy and lost which is i gotta say if that wasn't staged or like calculated Bro, bro's a goofy bro bro's, <laughs> like that sucks that's like bro you're gonna fight a real boxer for once and then fucking lose that's crazy that's crazy yeah like nate diaz is someone that's beaten conor mcgregor in an mma fight so it's like yeah. then you come out and lose to jake paul um and you know it's one of those things where jake paul needs to actually continue fighting real boxers and i saw him on impulsive recently um but he was saying that in two years he wants to be good enough to um, fight Canelo, and you're not gonna ever get good enough to fight Canelo if you keep fighting these MMA, these older MMA fighters that come into the boxing ring. But like Nate Diaz's style was so weird. Like I didn't watch the whole fight, or I didn't I didn't buy the fight. I just watched the the clips online. But the way he was punching, it was like like he he wasn't like throwing like boxing punches. Like there wasn't really any technique. I feel like Jake Paul in order to, in order to keep selling pay per views and to keep this you know, the untold story of Jake Paul, like this like legacy thing going, you have to actually start winning against boxers, and especially since, like you said, the one boxer he's actually fought, he lost to. So it's, yeah, I think his whole thing is finding interesting people to fight. Not really like fight. Like they're not real, like they're real fights, but they're not real. Like they're not like he's into the sport. He's entered, he's in an entertainment. I mean, that's right. his main thing. He's not a fighter. He's not a, well, he's a fighter, but he's not like a, he, he he's not in it for the act just the boxing he's in it to entertain and make like entertain people and make money as much as money as possible so 
He's trying to figure out. He's trying to keep writing that shit. When did the shit, this YouTube boxing shit start? Logan Paul got canceled in 2017, and he, I think it was like less than a year later. So I would say early 2018, 2017, well, was, 2018 was, is when it started. It was, it was the KSI versus um that one little white guy. I can't remember. It was like Weller, well, well Weller, Weller. Um, okay, hold that on. sounds right. But they did it part. first, and then it turned, in, and then the the Paul brothers came in for that second wave. Yeah. Yeah, I, Logan Paul, whenever the Logan Paul uh, KSI fight initially got announced um, and the whole promotion process, I feel like that blew up the entire thing. Like it was it was like getting some views. It was an, it was worth a watch, but it wasn't anything that was respected um, like it is today. I do think it's funny that I'm just all like, yeah, Jake Paul needs to fight some like real boxers. And then KSI has just only fought like four dudes, like four YouTubers. And it's just all like, no, no one's talking real. shit to him, but it's just like, he's also not, you know, trying to claim to, you know, he's not like constantly fucking boxing. And then like, if, if KSI boxed as much as Jake Paul has been boxing, he probably would have already been to a boxer by now, like multiple boxers. Yeah. Like he would have stopped the YouTube shit, but it's KSI is playing it smart. He's fucking, he's letting the hype real. He's waiting for it to build up. And then whenever the boxing feels like it's about to die out, he's going to be all like, I, right, now I'll fight Jake Paul. Fuck it. Yeah, uh, apparently I don't know if it's true because it came from Jake Paul's mouth, but um, he was saying that KSI or no, no, it wasn't Jake Paul's mouth. It was a uh, uh, Jeff Wittig's mouth. But uh, apparently KSI said there's some like Tommy Fury uh, KSI fight that's getting hyped up right now, and so it's not an official, uh, an officially licensed boxing match, but it's um, an exhibition. But they're still supposed to fight. And KSI was on the record saying that if he beats Tommy Fury, then he can retire from YouTube boxing being the best boxer, which I feel like is a little, that's a little cop out just a little bit. Like you should, I and I think KSI could beat Jake Paul, but I, I think he sh- in order to retire saying you're the best YouTuber boxer, you got to beat Jake Paul because he is like the biggest name in that, in that space. But KSI just, for a second, he is such a an anomaly. Everything that he does makes him so much goddamn money. Like he does, or he was doing rea- gaming and the reactions and the the side men is a whole fucking thing where everything that they put out is um, gold. Essentially, they did that charity match where they sold like sixty thousand tickets in less than an hour. Like that's a level of influence that some countries <laughs> don't have, and. Uh, it's pretty wild, pretty wild. But yeah, he it's you can definitely feel it in the undertones that this KSI Jake Paul fight is just looming in everybody's mind. Anybody who's interested in that space, which I'm not like I'm not really into fighting or anything like that, but it's it's still part of the YouTube culture, so it's you can't really avoid it. Um but it just feels like that is brewing for sure. Who who would you say would actually win that fight? Uh, KSI versus Paul. Mm-hmm. Mm. And follow up question: Will Jake Paul and Logan Paul ever fight? I think because Logan is getting into the wrestling thing, I think that's inevitable. I think that might actually. I think I don't think that KSI and Jake Paul will ever fight. Um, throwing that out there, I think that KSI just it's not his thing anymore. I think he's just been out of the game too long. That not saying that he couldn't get back into it, but like I just I feel like he's not gonna want to. I think he's doing his own thing. I haven't even I don't even know what KSI is up to lately. I haven't seen yeah. anything of him. He's become maybe he will get in just to become relevant again, or maybe I'm just I'm just saying he's not relevant because I haven't heard anything from him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel, I'm sure he's still raking in millions of views. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm sure he's doing great. Uh, I just haven't. I don't think I've seen anything on KSI in like months. Um, so maybe like a uh, but if if KSI and Jake Paul were to fight, I. I think that Jake Paul would win. Um, I think Jake Paul's been doing this for a while consistently. He's just he. This is just his shit now. He took it over. I mean, he because he stuck with it. Um, as much as I don't like Jake Paul, I mean yeah. that's he's been he's been doing it. Whether he's been fighting, he hasn't been fighting real boxers, but fucking KSI isn't a real boxer. He's like right. <laughs> he's had a few matches against some YouTubers that train just as much as him. So. I don't know, but if Jake, I don't think Jake Paul, I think Jake Paul and Logan Paul, there's a good chance. I think that's a good way. If both of them feel like they're losing, um, some like hype or whatever, or people aren't really th- talking about them anymore. And I think that's kind of what they're stirring up right now. 
possibly a little bit yeah yeah because they're kind of beefing with each other like they talk shit to each other all the time and Mm -hmm. jake always is all like hey didn't you lose like every one of your fights and so it's it's like the undefeated brother versus the constantly defeated brother it it, it, it'd be a cash grab for sure it'd be that one would be the most like i would have the most confidence in saying that it's like staged it's like they because they're brothers i mean it's so easy to be able like hey how can we make this the most entertaining thing yeah especially when you look at what happened to them whenever they were doing their youtube beef that apparently was real beef they apparently actually didn't like each other during that time period when they were like doing the daily vlogging thing Mm -hmm. but uh yeah on the most recent episode of impulsive they were they had this like 10 minute long argument um where jake paul feels like logan is playing both sides of the coin because obviously jake really doesn't like ksi and that is a real beef between those two but logan still feels okay partnering with ksi and and doing those those business ventures but on logan's side he feels like he can love his brother but also they're in the same space so he, he feels like he doesn't necessarily need to you know follow that um headspace because it's just going to cut off bread from him but um, I personally would agree with Jake because, I mean, it is your brother at, at the end of the day. And um, it's something it seems like Logan does it a lot where he he does use that like, but you're my brother coin. Both Paul brothers are this isn't uh, this whole entertainment YouTube shit isn't just for fun anymore. Like it, I'm sure it was back when like they had Vine in their early YouTube days. I feel like then it was like genuinely just fun for them. I think now it's all, every every single thing they say, every opinion, every business decision, every every single decision or thing they do in their lives is trying to make more money and get more famous, like stay yeah. relevant and get. It's never. It's just. It just everything's fake for them. That's why I just don't believe in the Jake Paul shit because the Logan Paul, Jake Paul, like they're just they just seem like two people. Just which I, hey, I respect the grind except for whenever Logan Paul scams fucking thousands of people um other than that uh if you're just doing shit like the prime thing with ksi um and jake with his fighting if that's what y'all are doing and it's entertainment and y'all are just trying to, y'all are just in it for the bread more power to you it's fucking it's a job i mean right. it's life get your money get your money up not your funny up but it, it's it's the scamming and stuff as but it, it just it's that's the problem with making as much as they do and being these constantly in the public eye is that they're just they turn into pieces of shit. I mean, they just they start doing shit to hold on to keep grasping at the fame and fortune that they've been so lucky and worked so hard for, but now they're doing it in a not so fun way, which sucks. Yeah. But you know. Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, family is the most important thing at the end of the day, and you know, your uh, brother's your brother, you can hate them. Well, you know. Yeah, yeah, but family's family is the most important. You, you, if you don't got your family, who do you have? Right, and um, it's especially them too. I mean, they're the they're in such a unique spot where most famous people can't really relate to anyone around them, especially their family, because their family's not famous, and so it feels like a very lonely, isolating thing. But for them, they've weirdly done the almost same exact thing in their careers, and so they can relate to each other. And I feel like that's a power and a level of connection that you can have that would be very rare. And if you spit on that and um, give that up for money and or cloud or views or whatever you want to do. Um, and apparently Logan and Jake both say they don't care about views anymore, but I mean, both actions speak louder than words. Yeah. And yeah. Um, at the end of the day, your brother's your brother and you got to keep that at the forefront. But speaking of fights, apparently, I don't know if we talked about this on the show. So essentially, uh, Mark Zuckerberg came out and said recently that uh, we should basically all move on from this fight that they were going to have. And Elon is no longer taking it seriously. Um, or has never taken it seriously. And uh, I'm personally very disappointed. There was literally a report like two days ago that the call or not the Coliseum, but they were in talks with apparently this very prestigious place to host the fight and. A lot of people thought it was, it was the Coliseum. I don't know. It was one of those things that felt like right for 2023. Like with everything yeah, going give us, on. Give, give us a rich person fight. Give us Come two on. just fucking unnecessarily wealthy people fucking each other up. You know? 
Let's let's yeah. do it. Sick the rich on each other. Fuck it. Full send. Let's get some entertainment. Let's do some fun- funky shit. The world's weird. Let's let's embrace it. One hundred percent. And I never thought in a million years that I would be in favor that I would root for Mark Zuckerberg in any capacity. But in this case, I think I would root for Mark Zuckerberg. Who would you root for? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that much about uh, Zuckerberg um, because I use Elon's platform so much. I know a little too much about him, and I just, so I will root for Zuckerberg. But yeah, I mean, fuck both of them. I, I just rich people suck. Eat the rich, they're baby. So, Eat they're the so rich. rich. They're just so rich. It sucks. And then I would be if I was rich. If I was rich. Y'all can hate me from down there, but I'm up here. I'm rich. I don't give a fuck. That's right. I get why they're horrible people, but right now I'm poor, so fuck them. <laughs> there was a stat that came out apparently that if the top, like if all the billionaires came out and gave like less than 1% of their wealth towards ending homelessness in, in the US and hunger, um, they could do that. No problem. But they just choose not to. Because that money to them is better spent um, elsewhere. Like Bill Gates is apparently spending his money now um, building mosquitoes that uh, can give vaccines to people, oh. and um, and so that's that's where he feels like his yeah. His it's belongs. you know to be devil's advocate. Like I don't want to like we're not rich. We don't know what it feels like. What it means to have that much money. Sure, we're like yeah. Like they could just give a small portion of their vast wealth. And solve so many problems. But then again, like when we're asked like, Hey, would you like to round up to donate to the children's hospital? We tell them no. <laughs> well, we're the just, thing uh, is, is with those we're poor, but we're poor. Right. With, with those companies too, it's clearly like a tax write off thing. I mean, yeah, technically it goes to a good thing, that but too. it doesn't feel like I'm doing a good thing when I'm doing that. Yeah, just like, oh, yeah, let me help you out. Um, right. But also, so it's just like, no, the the thirteen eighty five looks so much worse whenever it says $14 flat. Uh, it makes me feel not good about myself. It's like, it's just like now I'm spending too right. much. But that's and a poor like, person mindset because I'm just poor. Every cent counts. I don't know what to – and then it's but it's yes. hard for us to conceive because even though that that makes sense to us and it's, you know, it it's common sense like, yeah – money to poor people is more important but uh rich with rich people if you were rich it would be a whole different ball game because this is your this is your money and a lot of these people you know despite them being douchebags or sucking they worked hard for it they earned their wealth whether or not they should be making that much (laughs) is insane like the amount that the richest person has or just even the fucking 10% of the richest people have is just it. It Like you said, they could fucking solve so many problems yeah. by just using their wealth differently. But it's just like, we can't, who are we to say, you know, how we would do it? Like, we're like, it's easy for us to be like, yeah, we're poor and you're rich. Like just spend your money. Yeah. But it's a whole I, different I mean, it's yours. That that's, that's very true. I guess I would just say like with some billionaires, you get lucky. Like you have Mark Cuban who sold his company for, um, however, like 1.2 billion and he was instantly a billionaire. Um, cause just cause he was early in on the, the internet stuff. So you had one good idea and it just pays off in a super highway. And that, and that's a, that's an extreme example. But with a lot of these billionaires, you know, people like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk to a different extent, but Amazon is just such a big company. Um, and there's there's so many billionaires that that do this, but the exploitation of what you're, you're the people who work for you, you have thousands and thousands of employees, millions in some cases, is the exploitation of of the, their labor that they're putting in. They can barely keep food on the table. Meanwhile, the margins of profit that is going to the top executives in the company, namely the the CEO and owner, that is when it becomes like, fuck you, bitch, like fuck you. Yeah, it sucks that because be you, you can't help but feel, especially with, yeah, these people just like, hey, it's like a battle just to get a raise like once a year. It's like, but then you see right. this the owner being like extremely like unnecessarily wealthy. Like if he accidentally lost a million dollars, he'd be all like, yeah, you know, it'd be how it'd be. But right. then it's just all like, oh, I have to fucking bust break my back to fucking get a raise and i could yeah i I mean it's obvious like it's just it sucks because you feel you can't help but feel like rich people only see their bank account and 
can't help but care. They're, they're not going to care because like, if you're that rich, there's so much money in the way. You're not going to see the poor people. Right. You're like, hey, let me just make more money because guess what? I don't care. There's thousands, if not millions of workers. If a few of them fucking complain, but most of them need the job. So right. they're like, fuck, complain. I don't give a shit. And that's what that's where the hate for the rich comes from because it feels like they're just trying to make more and more money and they make way too fucking much. Just way too right. much, which I get it. I would want to make that much money. I just, I'm poor. And the reason I'm poor is because I don't have the heart to make that much money. I don't have the heart to fucking start a business and to be a complete shithead to people and use them right. and be all like, oh, I don't care that you're trying to feed your family. Fucking work or I'll replace you and make me more money. And it's just like, I, it's just both sides I get. I, it's about that grind. And then I get the whole not wanting to fuck people over and because that's just business. Get the fuck out of here. I'm a human being. I don't want to fucking be a dickhead. And if that means I'm poor for the rest of my life, that fucking sucks. I hate the world. I hate that the world works that way, but that's how the world works. Yeah. Some people are just wired in a way where you don't feel that empathy. I mean, sociopaths. That's why there's so many sociopaths in business because they don't feel emotion. They don't feel that sadness. They're all that, about like, that oh, money, baby. Yeah. Oh, these thousand workers that I just cut their wages, they're not going to be able to pay rent and they're, they're, they're going to be homeless and they're baby and children. And that whole money doesn't buy happiness. And then poor people are like, uh, I don't, I would get, if I got a lot of money, I would be very happy. It's because the people that are constantly making money, the rich, most of the most, I don't want to speak for all rich people, but most of the rich people, they're like, yeah, I mean, I'm rich. I've peaked. Well, I mean, it's right. so obviously, but if you give a poor person money, money does buy happiness for some people. But if you're a rich fuck already and you've been a rich fuck forever, obviously it's not going to buy you happiness. You've had it the whole time. No, money exactly. buys happiness for poor people, not for rich yeah. people. That's the whole rich people being all like money doesn't actually buy happiness. If you don't shut the fuck up, I swear to fucking God. Yeah. Obviously it doesn't buy you happiness, bro. You've already bought everything. Like, <laughs> Get the fuck out of my yeah. face with that bullshit. Money buys you peace. Money gets you. Money gives you comfort. It gives you <laughs> the ability to not worry about uh, your light staying on next month. And if I don't get this amount of hours in this pay period, I can't pay rent. I can't buy groceries. Once you don't have to worry about where your food's <laughs> going to come from in a couple weeks, life is a lot easier that way. And then you start looking for other things to be upset about. Um, and Rich people definitely have problems. There's the mo money, mo, yeah, mo I mean, they're human. They're, they're human beings. I mean, I'm not saying that fucking rich people aren't allowed to be sad. I'm just right. saying don't. I don't ever want to hear out of a rich person's mouth. Money doesn't buy happiness. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Right. I, maybe you should have focused on being a human being and not a fucking business person, and then maybe you'd be <laughs> no, happier. Right. I don't. It's just money Some isn't guys, fucking. Uh, <laughs> Some of these guys really need therapy. That that yeah. that would help them a lot. Which cost money oh that's crazy you could find some peace and happiness if you it's yeah it's it's a uh, i hate the whole yeah and uh you made a good point it. about uh the like who they hang around with because you know these rich people that are exploiting their their workers they don't see the the damage that they're doing to um their employees at the lower level like you're you're going to all these rich rich parties with all these rich rich people you're not really the people you're it's like on a di completely different level, but how I think of it is like high school, you know, how like you're in your own ecosystem, how in your, in that moment, it's the only thing that matters. Everything outside of that is irrelevant because everything is focused on this. And that's how I feel like these rich, rich people in their circles and these dinner parties kind of feel like they're in their own little bubble while the rest of the um, world in reality has to deal with the consequences of, of what they decide to do. And so it's very, very disappointing. Um, so, you know, long story short, let's just end homelessness, guys. Let's end <laughs> homelessness. Let's yeah, do hey, something. us poor people are too stupid to solve these problems. So how about you rich fucks take all your money and figure it out? Because if you don't, we're fucked. <laughs> so right. the pressure's on you. You wanted to be rich? Guess what? Now you get the fucking weight of the world on your shoulders. I don't know what to tell you. I... <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm going to go do this stupid fucking bullshit job that doesn't pay me enough. All right. What's the next topic? Hit me with it. Yeah. That so, booze, boy. I didn't know. Were you? Oh, what happened? Working. You know how it is. You know how it be. Yeah. I just be working. Blue collar Tristan. You're, you're a working man. Okay. So I guess, I guess real quick. Um, were you aware that there were, that there were people stranded in space? Stranded in space? 
they were on, so they weren't able to leave the International Space Station for six more months longer than what they thought because there was some sort of issue with them being able to leave. Like they, they were stranded in the ISS, not able to come home. And they recently made, they did something to where now they're actually planning to return home. But uh, it was this headline on the nationalnews.com, but they were talking, the headline just said, astronauts stranded on space station for a year prepare to come home. And uh, it said American and two Russians have spent six months longer than expected in orbit after the docked spacecraft was damaged. It said uh, preparations were underway to bring back three astronauts who have been on the International Space Station for nearly a year, which isn't that crazy. An American and two Russians, like everything, everything that's going on in the world. I wonder what those conversations are like up there. But it said a, res a rescue craft sent by Russian space agency earlier this year is due to leave the ISS on September 27th uh, with NASA astronaut Frank Rubio and Russian cosmonauts Dmitry Pedelin and Sergei Prop Propkiev. Great pronunciation. I'm sure you did it perfectly. Me too. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty wild news. I didn't hear about that at all. I didn't know that I didn't know they were stuck there, but you know. Uh, I guess I guess shout out to Russia. A broken clock is right two times a day for rescuing the American astronaut because apparently it was it was their spacecraft that that saved them. So that'd be terrifying. Stranded in space, each other haircuts. Fuck that. I could, I hate whenever like at work like today I had to work an extra like three four hours. Couldn't imagine being like told, hey yeah, <laughs> hold tight for about six more months. It's just like Jesus Christ. But yeah. I'm sure that they're like, you know, they're 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 told and they're they're prepared for the possibility of a longer station. Um, but still, just being up there in just fucking space, I I no, I couldn't do it. I just I'm not built for that. That'd be insane. I'd go crazy just in space, looking at the world. I you can't you can't feel smaller than that. You just you no, can't. No, no, that's insane. Just... And more alone. That's in. That's yeah. That's that's crazy. Uh, so did they make it? They're on their way home soon, or did they make it back? Or uh, in September they're gonna head home. Oh Jesus Christ! They're still. Hey, I'm sorry. Hey, we'll keep it real down here. We'll watch. We'll watch it. Don't worry. We'll. Uh... Yeah. What? Yeah, how sorry. terrifying is that? Where they tell you, like you're in this like metal just like can in space, and then. Like something goes wrong with your technology to where you're not able to come home. That is terrifying. Like that's terrifying. Anything can happen in space. What I think about more often than I probably should is just the idea that um, a meteor or something could just come out of fucking nowhere. Like going like a like 500,000 miles an hour or something crazy like that from space and just hit the earth. And uh, it's not healthy thoughts, but I imagine that is even more likely with smaller rocks and debris in space hitting the ISS. Yeah, imagine just hitting it just right. I don't know how meteors work. I don't know how like we can if we can detect them easily or can. how that I, I don't know how I don't know how that is, but the, I'm pretty sure yeah, I'm pretty sure that they have a whole thing where they're just all like, "Hey, like let's let's move a little bit or we could handle getting hit by a few rocks, space rocks." Um yeah. but there was the apparent meteor that put the uh, dinosaurs away forever. So apparently it's yeah, happened before. But their technology was like, it was close, but it wasn't cr quite as close to ours. So, I mean, they probably, they probably yeah. didn't see it coming. I can't speak for the dinosaurs. I wasn't around then, but like they probably just like kind of waited for that shit. And it was still early, you know, there were still rocks all around. You know how things are, you know how things be. Uh, I don't know anything about Fair science. I, I space is so scary because I know nothing about it. Like I I, <laughs> people are like, I remember the meme where it's just like me in fifth grade learning that the sun is going to explode one day, like in like billions of years or millions of years, and it's just like no, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just not like, bro, I'm not going to see that shit. Uh, I, I'm good. I'm good. Um, but some random ass fucking thing. I, I think that human extinction is going to be. Uh, from within, for sure. I think that it's not going to be some random asteroid or some space shit that's happened. It's just going to be some someone finally goes, you know what? Fuck it. Who made this button anyways? And then boom, nuke, 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 nuke. And then it's just going to fucking kill us all. Um, I think that's what's going to happen. I hope not in my lifetime. I hope it just happens to my grandkids. 
Sorry, grandkids. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, honestly, like, honestly, though. Until I have them, though, if I have them. But then again, if it happens to me, either my grandkids won't be born or it's going to happen to them anyway. So might as well. Might as well just happen to them after I'm gone. You know, let yeah. me just live a full life. I mean, they, yeah, they, 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 I'm sure they'll be fine. They have more of a chance to go and find a different planet or something. Right, right now, I'm, I'm not even close to finding a new planet. We haven't even made it to fucking Mars yet. We've they can had- talk to Elon. He's apparently working on that Mars colony. So, did you see that sad video of like one of the Mars rovers, and it was like a, it had like a sad final word or something, and I was just all like. Good. It was. I'll, I'll send. I'll, I'll send you it out if you haven't Tell heard of that. it. It was so sad. Like the robot just like said something. It's like okay, now my mission is over or some shit, and it just died. Oh. And I was just like, oh no, it's just a robot. But I feel so sad. It was terrible. But yeah, little Mars rover is going. I love looking at like. There's a video of uh, Venus, I believe, like a, a a rover or a thing crash landed on there and like was live for like like 30 seconds or some shit. And it's so, it's so cool. It's so trippy looking at like footage of pl- other planets. It's just like, right. damn, that's like, that place is just empty right now. Like it's just, nothing's going on. Just this big ass fucking planet. Just A giant chaos. Planet. Just nothing, just nothing going on. It's right now it's happening. Like it's just existing. It's out there. And there's more even further that we haven't even discovered. Like that's so fucking, I love space. It's terrifying, but yes. God, I love it. It makes existence so much more mysterious and fun, even though existence was mysterious and not so fun as is. But right. it's just like the idea of just like the craziest, most chaotic rant. And the fact that this accident could just happen billions and billions of times over fucking in some different corners of the universe. I love existence is fun. Existence is great. It's it so is exciting. Even though my existence sucks and I want to, you know, sorry. But the human experience is so crazy. It's just <laughs> like we have the problem, the list of problems and just like crazy shit and just shit that we have to push to the back of our heads because we're focused on the problems that will affect us more closely. It's insane. And yeah, yeah. it's it's Existence pretty crazy. It's so pointless. It's so weird. Not pointless. I don't want to say pointless, but it's weird. It's weird. It is like, yeah, I mean, it's like when you it's it makes you think when we get involved in problems on earth, things that really don't matter that much, petty shit. And then you just zoom out and it's like, it doesn't like nothing fucking matter that none of that shit matters at all. It's like an ant just died right now. That's, that's not even, that's even, that's not even as small as it would be. If our planet just ceased to exist, if our planet just exploded in the vastness of the universe, it would be even less than like a fucking ant dying right now. Yes, 100%. And that's so, 100%. that's so crazy. But I love, like I said on a previous episode, I believe on this one where because the universe is infinite, the center is based off perspective. So you are the center of your that's the true. universe from your point of view. And um, I love that. I think it's great. Uh, even though I am the main point. character and I am the only one that actually exists, y'all are just you know, parts of my reality that I've chose to can, uh, perceive. That's it. I mean, I had a lot of other topics on here, but we're getting close um, to the time. Yeah. 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 So we can, we can save some of these for, for a different week. We didn't even get into Lil Tay, but, oh yeah, that was what a crazy, what a weird thing. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited because we could talk about Lil Tay. We could talk about some other topics, you know, that aren't political on this week's episode of T Gold when That's Jacob right. comes on. Woo, 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 woo. That's you right. Know, this, this episode comes out on Friday. Uh, I'm going to be there the next day um, recording the episode with you guys. I'm, I'm really excited. It's going to be, be so be good. We're going to get extremely intoxicated so jacob yes. might say something and i feel bad for jacob because he's just all like damn like i'm not gonna edit this one i'm not gonna you know he's just all like oh what if i say something stupid and then i'm gonna post it and he's gonna be like tristan i asked you not to post that i'll be like i don't care no i'm just kidding i'm very respectful on things that need to be cut um no, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited this is like the first time um because most like youtube things like i've i've been doing like like video stuff for like a long time just like since i was a kid but this is the first time where it's not like led by um me like it's it's cool like i'm excited to go into your set yeah you uh, kind of you, you know you took me under your wing you showed me the podcast world you know you kind of showed me the youtube thing and then nah. finally i just i found someone else because it's very hard like people I, I know most people know but like especially those who really like us who really wanted to do this kind of creator thing 
that like it's really hard to find someone to like fucking do this with yeah like, especially consistently as you should be doing it and we've been doing it you know we had a little hiccup there where we didn't do it for months at a time <laughs> but we were still you know we we're getting there but it's 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 very hard and i was lucky enough to find two two dudes that were fucking in it just as much as i am and being able to do it and i was able to branch off from jacob and go try something and you know fucking dip my toes and now they're coming together the origin with the present Mm, two guys one lazy thinker it is so Ooh. exciting i'm very hyped because the tea go i love this one don't get me wrong and i did drink on this one a little bit but not too much Ooh. um but i we're gonna drink so we gotta get much sloshy. more we gotta get yeah. sloshy jacob's staying over so he you know he has no excuse he's gonna get and jacob uh if i remember correctly is a Lightweight. Oh, so find out. We're gonna those, find hey, out if those margaritas fuck me up. Who and I drink every single weekend. They're about to fucking fuck your shit. I'm so excited. Josh doesn't drink, which is you know respectful. You know that's that's, that's how it is. He doesn't yeah. drink anymore because he's doing a little diet thing this month. Maybe he'll drink. Maybe because it's a special episode. It's the it's the episode. It is what years of podcasting has brought <laughs> me to. It is this two guys, one lazy thinker. This fucking Saturday, it'll be posted Monday next week, a week from today. And it's Fuck gonna be, yeah. it's gonna be so good. I'm so excited. I'm just so excited. It's gonna be a great time. It's gonna be a great yes, time. Yes, 100, 100 percent. And we should also, well, well, actually, I will. We we can talk after the show. But we can um, talk after the show. Um, well, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for watching episode twelve of the Lazy Finger Show. Um, <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Um, and yeah, I will see everyone on T Gold next week. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>